Okay, welcome to East Denver. Woo! Okay. Uh, thank you for being here. And uh, I'm going to give things straight over to East Denver's chief steward and chief do a lot of worker, uh, John Power. John, let's welcome him up. Hey, everybody. Uh, who's been here more than a day? Who's been here more than two days? It's getting thinner. Three? Well, we're just getting started, so we got like three more days or something, at least. So, get ready. Um, we're going to talk about the bufficorn for a minute. So if you haven't seen this over there, or right here, or right here, then you haven't been paying attention. Uh, but essentially, we want to talk about what all of this means, this memory nonsense that we've come up with. So the bufficorn was birthed after the War of Protocolis of 1245 CE in the mountains of Colorado where the tribes of the buffalo created a treaty with the unicorns of Etheria and made a new species. Ever since, they've been living at the top of the 14ers of Colorado and they are the magical, fantastical animals that believe in really three core principles. The first is collaboration. Buffaloes, by nature, are community animals. Community is the second component that we talk about because community is really what creates shared outcomes and value for not just the individual, but for the group. And in order to do that, the third component is contribution. So. As a focal point of this event, we want to emphasize contribution as the thing you should be thinking about. So as the hackathon kicks off in less than two hours, the mindset that we encourage you to think about in order to be successful here is contribution. How do I contribute to a team, a project, a goal, an outcome that's bigger than just me? It's something that actually creates the buoyancy of an economy, the buoyancy of a community, the buoyancy of a project that creates more value than just for one individual or even a small group of individuals. So think about that very clearly as you're thinking about the ethos of ETH Denver. This is what we encourage you to do. Now, I'm going to pass the conversation here to our, my co-steward. Um, and you'll notice that we use the word steward quite a bit here because we don't believe in the, in the notion of sort of hierarchical stuff. Um, on your badges, there's no last names, there's no titles, there's no like bureaucratic conferency stuff, which is why we don't call ourselves a conference. We are a community gathering. So in order to make this possible, we couldn't do it without our sponsors. <laughs> ah, it's so good to be back here. Didn't think we'd actually have this building this year, but this is a very special... This building adds so much vibe and ethos to this event. It's just like the, it's the perfect gem for this to happen. And um, So there are some very special organizations and people that we wanted to give a lot of credit to and just point out. And, Raise your hand. Who here, is a, who here is from an organization up here or a volunteer or really anyone contributing to this event this year? Raise your hand. No, no, no. Like everyone should be raising their hand right now. Everyone is contributing to this event. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is, it's quite special. Like we are building a new tribe. Like this is a very special community that, that we have here. And there's, a, there's love in the air, there's, there's this ethos, there's 
collaboration, as John said, um, open source. There's, there's all these core values which are just so positive and so great. And we're, I mean, completely funded by all of these sponsors. They spend weeks preparing their workshops. They fly out here just to teach you guys. And it, I mean, it's like you, you, get, you get to eat amazing food, um, hack for three days, drink free kombucha. So many people involved in this event. So I just wanted to give them a huge hand. They well deserve it. More on the tribe front is Kent Barton here, my, my co-founder of the uh, event here and co-steward, so give it up for Kent. What's up, everybody? Thank you, Corey. Um, all right. Quick show of hands, uh, who is from out of town? Who came from another country to be here? That's awesome. Last year, I think we had people from a few dozen countries. It's probably more this time. Um, so on behalf of all of us organizing this, uh, thank you for coming. It's just so humbling that you came out to be a part of this. And uh, it wouldn't be, uh, this couldn't be possible without you. Um, Corey mentioned the community, and we think it's, it's really unique and also emblematic of how great crypto is. Um, I just wanted to preface everything before we dig in, you know, and kind of say, why are we here? Kind of for two reasons, really. Uh, to build stuff and to have fun. And, you know, at the most basic level, that's it. Meet some new friends, hang out. Awesome. But, like, we like to be a little bit philosophical here in Colorado. And, and of course, it, it's the same with blockchain as well. Let's, at, let's look at the big picture. Um, this is the famous pale blue dot photograph. Um, populated by the late and great and amazing Carl Sagan. Uh, that's our planet photographed from 3.8 billion miles away by the Voyager spacecraft, one of them. Um, and it sort of drives the point home. Everything that's ever happened, everybody you ever knew or loved is, is here um, on this little dot. And I think it speaks to how powerful decentral decentralization could be. Uh, these days, decentralization is a bit of a buzzword. You know, especially during the ICO bubble, let's decentralize AI and do a token sale, cool. But uh, really, when you boil it down, there are some seriously flawed things about our society as a result of centralized powers. Uh, they tend to drive uh, divisions between humanity. And, um, you know, there's a lot of examples of this in the government and media. Distributed computing gives us the power to really not be so divided and, and do things a little bit differently. This was the singular brilliance of Satoshi Nakamoto. He saw something that was truly fucked up about centralized power with respect to money. And he said, let's do a better job of it. And he implemented that, or she or they, whoever Satoshi is. Maybe Satoshi's in this room. Um, but here we are um, several years later after the advent of Bitcoin, and there's this potential to do so much more. And uh, I think it's worth being mindful of, you know, what, what, what can we build that's going to actually make the world a better place? If you just are looking to have fun, that's cool. But in the back of your mind, think, hey, we could have fun and also what problems can we solve? Uh, it sounds a little bit utopian and decentralization is certainly not a panacea, but there's a lot we can do with this technology. So very briefly, um, I think Ethereum is a great way to implement a lot of these ideas. Um, it tends to be a fun environment. If you're just getting into this ecosystem, uh, welcome. It's just, it's a place where you can really be yourself and have fun. So very quickly, three things that I think are great about Ethereum. Um, substance over hype. Even during the, the heights of the bull market last year, every Ethereum conference I went to, I didn't hear one mention of price discussion. Nobody cares about that. That's, that's not interesting. It's more so what can we build? Um, it's also a no-ego zone. You don't, you don't see a lot of people talking about how great they are, or their, how great their project is. It's a place where anybody can really come out there with a good idea and do something. If you find yourself feeling egotistical, I suggest maybe visiting the desert, doing some pathogens or psychedelics that might assist. If you feel the desire to uh, say your project is so much better than others, or uh, you know, basically just kind of be a jerk on Twitter, but fortunately, this doesn't happen too often in Ethereum, and it, it's one of the reasons I love this ecosystem. 
Uh, this is a reprise from last year, but it's just, a, just as relevant today. Uh, there's no gatekeepers in Ethereum. Um, it was originally marketed as an unstoppable application platform, but it's also a place where anybody can jump in and do anything. Um, all you need is a great idea and to attract users. You don't have to get validation from VCs. You don't have to get validation from, from uh, you know, authorities in, in this space. Um, we've seen this time and again over the past year. Uh, there's a lot of projects, especially in the open finance space, that didn't even exist a year ago. And yet here we are, and they've, you know, they're taken off. This happens frequently, and I think this is unique to, to our ecosystem. Uh, and for somebody that's, that's building a DAP or building a business on this, this technology, I think it's, uh, it puts us in a unique position because you can, do, you can do anything as long as you're meeting the needs of the users. Finally, be yourself. Um, a lot of people in crypto, well, some people, they take things way too seriously. And it, this is very life-changing and game-changing, but let's, that's cool. Let's, let's remember to have fun along the way and especially be yourself. Um, what I like about this community, and it's been like this since day one in Ethereum, as far as I can tell, is it's a place where you can, you can, be, you can do whatever you want. You can let your freak flag fly. You don't have to be beholden to some idea of what you should be in this space, uh, whether that means how you, how you carry yourself, what you're doing, the art you're doing, um, the music you're doing. You can, you can just be yourself. And in fact, I would argue the more authentic you are and genuine you are in this space, the more, uh, the more people you'll get supporting your project. And this is a wonderful thing. All right. Cryptorado. So what makes Colorado so cool? Well, we have a lot of great projects here. Um, Colorado's always been a bit of a, a tech hub over the past few decades, and increasingly so. So... Um, just wanted to give a quick shout out to all the Colorado based companies here. Um, let's give it for XDAI, <laughs> Gitcoin, Alan and the dudes at Radar Relay, Shapeshift and Keep Key, Opolis, Theo and Dapix, and if, I don't know if Zuko's here, but of course Zcash. Um, these, are, these are just a few of the projects to emerge over the past three to five years here, here in Colorado. If, if you're not sure where to locate a crypto business, we strongly suggest coming here. We have a great innovative uh, blockchain uh, governor's seat. And uh, straight to the north in Wyoming, we have a lot of innovation going on as well. So we'll keep things moving along. Hope you guys have fun, and let's build some cool shit. Thank you. Thank you, Kent. And let's just give, seriously, these people put a ton of work into the event this year. All this stuff is as a result of them and all the volunteers and all the other people up there who are doing work. So let's give them a big old round of applause. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. You guys are heading out. Okay, sweet. I'm going to do some quick logistics stuff here for a quick sec uh, before we get on to the other speakers that are coming on. So... First and foremost, from Vibes, you got some vibes already from people? I'm putting this in. Um, you, the first key vibe is that you help us co-create this event. So you have the responsibility to make this a great event for yourself, okay? And if you need help, let us know. Reach out to the people like this or the people in the uh, green shirts or go to the help desk over there if you need help. Um, and then remember that this is a balance between the three pillars here. Uh, there's the learning and the workshops that are happening today, that happen today and tomorrow, um, with the building and the hacking that you might be doing, and then the community vibes of hanging out with people. So you're going to have to balance those three things together. Um, maybe 100% one, 30, 30, 30, whatever. Um, and then one final note is from a sponsor perspective. So if you, the sponsors really, they've done... They've made this amazing event free for everybody. So if you're not a sponsor, um, please don't like come in and start like shilling your stuff everywhere upstairs, like with all the sponsors. Like they paid for those booths. Um, don't go and like up to the hackers and start shilling stuff. Feel free to like, you know, talk with people about your thing, but don't don't, don't be too aggressive. Um, the other quick note is there's a cool water bottle game that you can play where you get 
you can go to each of the sponsor booths and other, some other places around this building, which is six uh, stories tall, and you can find um, various stickers, put them on your water bottle, uh, get these Gitcoin NFTs, these kudos through status, um, and then uh, if you get all of them, then you get these cool Easter eggs. So mainly, as you're going and chatting with the sponsors, uh, feel free to get these stickers from them, uh, and you can get some cool swag at the end. So, uh, other logistics. The food trucks are here from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. And as a quick note for everybody, you can't just give them your little coin. You need to take a picture of it with your, uh, you need to QR code it first. Um, so open up your app or whatever and get your QR code. It works with various wallets. Um, and then you can use your Buffa die to pay the people. So that's the food trucks. Please don't lose your lanyards or wristbands. Um, the wristbands are used for alcohol on day three on Sunday. As a note, there are two stages. So there's the buff corn stage, which is this one, and then the biddle stage, which is that one. So there are two stages. Make sure you are both. Um, for those who are hacking, a couple notes. One, we are trying out, we are dog fooding ourselves in various ways this year. So we're not using Slack. We're not using dev posts. Uh, we're trying things different. We're still using Medium. <laughs> but uh, for project submissions, you should uh, go to cowrie.io. Um, yeah. Um, and that's where you can see, that's where you will submit your project. And feel free, please take a picture of this because you can't remember everything. Um, Cowrie.io, and that is where you can submit your project and where your bounties, the, all the bounties are, okay, that you're going to hear from in a bit. Um, when you submit, make sure to put some contact information on there um, so that we can contact you, uh, if, you know, if you've won or if you're like a finalist or whatever. Uh, I recommend your status username, but you can also put your phone number, but it'll be up forever on IPFS. Um, so the other note here is for messaging, we're not using Slack. We're using status, um, and so if you go to git.sas.im slash chat slash public slash East Denver, then that's where everybody's hanging out. Um, so <laughs> please do that. Um, and then also, if you have any questions about any of this, the East Denver medium is really, really helpful. So if you go there, you can search all of this. There's things about judging. There's things about the bounties, messaging. Everything is on our medium page. Um, also, here's the Wi-Fi code, so please take a picture of that. And then if you have a child care, um, if you have children, we're in the back left corner. If you go to the second floor and then way back to the left corner, uh, there is a child care back there and also this really cool relaxation room. You're going to have to go way back there, but it's up the stairs to the left. Keep going, keep going. It's going to feel weird. There's like awesome yoga, meditation happening every day there. So actually check it out. Um, and as a final note, you can ch uh, do code check in the back left corner over there for three bucks um, for the whole event. So... The schedule, if you go to just eatdenver.com, uh, it's there, slash schedule. The biddling will begin, the hackathon begins after this opening ceremony, so at like 8 p.m. today. Um, I'll say that in a bit. Afterwards, there's going to be an open mic uh, team formation if you don't have a team yet. Um, tomorrow on Saturday, there's pretty much a full day of talks. Um, so from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., there are various talks that are happening, or you can be hacking most of the day. And as a quick note on that, this whole space is open 24 hours. So you can sleep here if you want. You can not sleep here if you want. It's really kind of a do-you scenario. But we're open 24 hours um, all through Sunday night. And then on Sunday, the submissions are due at 8 a.m. We're going to have uh, the judging is going to happen from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. plus like a science fair. Uh, and then there's going to be finalist presentations on stage with the closing ceremony uh, from 2 to 5. And then after that, there's an after party with food and hanging out um, here still in the venue. Ooh. Okay, so with that, please, if you have any questions on this, please come to us, ask us any questions.